In this video, I want to take a look at digital publications. If you are just catching our videos for the first time, thank you for watching. Of course, be sure to subscribe and like. And if you're a returning visitor, hope these are helping you in your class. So be sure to drop me a line and let me know how that's going for you. But let's get into our topic right now, which is digital publications. First of all, the line between digital video image and publication is kind of blurry. What we're going to define digital publications as for our presentation is the written word in digital format. And you have to remember with all of these things, they're kind of getting blurred. And the reason why I'm saying digital publications are blurred is because you can get iBooks through Apple, which has not only text, but digital interactions, animations, videos, audio files built into the digital publication. So as we see convergence of all this different technology, the lines between some of these become blurred or artificial. But again, for our purposes, we're going to define digital publication as more or less a book. And I think I've showed you this book before in the past, a book turned into a digital format. So digital publications, the written word in digital format examples would be ebooks, blogs, online magazines, online newspapers. Taking a look first at your ebooks, these are books published in a digital format. Here I have an older Kindle that I've had for several years. This actually was kind of my introduction to the world of the ebooks. And the cool thing about a Kindle and the entire Kindle store is that not only can you have a Kindle and read your material, but if you have a smartphone, there's a free Kindle app there. You can read stuff on your computer. You can read stuff on your tablet. It is cross-platform, which is pretty cool. It's also becoming easier to use as far as being able to highlight things. So, for example, if you're doing research or you're doing academic work, you can highlight information and actually search for the words that you're looking for, keywords that you're looking for. So, ebooks, books published in a digital format. Most popular platforms would be, as I've said, the Kindle, the Nook, that is by Barnes & Noble, and, of course, iBooks, which is... Apple. They're becoming more advanced, especially as textbooks are getting into the space. So what we're seeing right now is textbook companies starting to branch into the ebook world. Uh, whether or not that'll be successful, we'll see. But you can rent textbooks now online, which will automatically turn themselves off when your time is expired. You can read ebooks on special devices. Again, like I said, you can read them on the Kindle. You can read them on smartphones and computers. Special devices are designed to conserve battery and prevent eye strain. One of the differences between a Kindle and, for example, your smartphone when you read it is how it presents the information. The Kindles have incredible battery power. One of the reasons why they have that is because of digital ink. What occurs here is that the text is written on the screen and then more or less the Kindle goes into hibernation until you hit the next button and then it will rewrite the screen and then it will kind of go into hibernation. So it really does conserve battery power. Another thing that you'll notice if you look at a Kindle is how your eyes work with it. This is one of the big hangups when we were dealing with eBooks. When eBooks first started coming out, one of the problems that we had was eye strain. When you read a traditional book, it's not blasting light at you. What you're seeing in a regular book is the absence of light. The black ink absorbs the light. In a computer, you're actually being hit by light. The computer is putting out light, and that can cause eye strain. And so that was one of the big hangups originally with ebooks and with the Kindles and those things. They've solved that and less eye strain. Self-publishing. When uh, I've always enjoyed writing and I've written quite a bit over my career. In fact, that's kind of what I do for a living is writing, mostly nonfiction now. But one of the things that you could do back in the day was something called self-publishing. And back in the day, self-publishing was considered a massive waste of time and very much money because you would have to pay for the publishing. So you would have to pay for the editing, the binding, and the actual uh, distribution of the books. And this could cost you quite a lot of money. Now, in the wonderful world of technology, we don't have to worry about that anymore. Now, anybody with an idea and a word processor can publish a book. Now, I'm not saying they're going to publish a good book, but anybody with a voice and technology can publish their own completed book. With all of this stuff, content is king. So if you do good stuff, you'll find an audience. If you put out tripe, well, then nobody's going to find you. 
Two places to check out if you're interested in self-publishing a book. Now, we're not talking about publishing online. We're talking about publishing a book is Create Space and Lulu. Uh, I know for a fact that I'm, I'm not very familiar with Lulu, but I know Create Space. This is an Amazon company. And what you can do is actually upload your, your book, upload your video, and it will print on demand, which is kind of a cool idea. There's a website I would highly recommend checking out, or an article, I should say. This is through CNET, and it's 25 things you need to know about self-publishing. I would also recommend checking out these two books and these two authors, Day by Day Armageddon. This is a very good zombie book. This started off as a self-published, I believe it was published on a website, and it wound up becoming so popular, it was, uh, it was purchased by a book publishing company, and they've made three books, which are, again, very good. I would highly recommend them if you like zombie stories. And the other one, also one of my favorites, is Monster Hunter International. This is a series of books. It was written by uh, Mr. Korea, and again, very book, uh, very good. And it also started off as self-publishing, grew quite a big audience, and wound up going through uh, the regular publishing route. So those are two uh, self-published books, I would say, or self-publishing that became very successful. But again, the content was there, and then it grew the fan base. Newspapers. One of the things we're seeing is the demise of the newspaper. Newspapers are dying off, and they're kicking and screaming as they go down, but it's just a matter of time before we really do see, I think, the end of the traditional newspaper. More people today are getting news from online sources than newspapers. A Pew study done in 2012 found that half of Americans get news digitally, topping newspapers. Now, I can tell you personally, I have not picked up a newspaper in years but yet I can still consider myself very informed on current events, mainly because I'm checking out multiple news sources every day. I'm hitting up Fox News. I'm hitting up CNN News. I'm hitting up um, TechCrunch, CNET. Um, if I really want to get into the news, I'll also check out BBC. So I go through about four or five news outlets to get the news. Now, I don't want to get on my soapbox, but in today's day and world, you just don't want to read one source of news. Everybody has their slant to it, and everybody has their biases. And by reading multiple news sources, you kind of get a fuller picture of what's going on out there. Newspapers are either adapting to this new medium or they're closing the doors. And here are some kind of sobering statistics for newspapers. In 2009, 105 shut down. In 2010, 151 newspapers shut down. In 2012, 152 newspapers shut down. And it's a trend that is continuing. Either the newspapers are getting online, or they're going out of business. Blogs. You might have heard of blogs. This is a truncated version of web logs. It's a website that contains online personal reflections, comments, and often hyperlinks provided by the writers. What a blog is, is that anybody, again, with a voice and a computer can put their ideas out there. They can write about their interests, about topics that they find fascinating, that they might be experts in, or maybe they don't know enough and they shouldn't be writing that blog. Again, if you write it, doesn't mean people are going to find it. You really have to develop good content. Remember, content is always king when it comes to the digital world and digital publications. Blogging software, if you want to become a blogger, you can easily find three different tools to help you become a blogger. You have WordPress. This is one of my personal favorites. It's a relatively simple a program to learn how to use. It's very, very powerful, and it's free if you go through WordPress's website. You can have a uh, WordPress blog site hosted by them. You have Google. Of course, they have their own blogging platform. This is Google Blogger, and you will also have one that's increasingly popular. Tumblr is also getting out there. No, that's not a mistype. One of the misconceptions a lot of people have is that they can become full-time bloggers and make lots of money. I can tell you, I'm not saying you can't do it, but what I am saying is that just because you're working for yourself or working on your computer doesn't mean you're not having to be disciplined. If you're writing, and I highly recommend people to write, you're going to be writing a lot, and you're going to be writing constantly on a regular basis to build up that fan base in order to make a living out of it. Now, you can make a good living, but it does take time, patience, and skill in order to build that following. What we're also seeing now are multi-author bloggers. This is where you have large number of authors and editors working together. You might see universities do this, newspapers, media outlets, 
etc. We use this version of the blog. And finally, the microblog, the microblogging. And most of us probably engage in this in some form or fashion. What we're seeing with microblogging are very short posts. We're seeing this with Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, and other social media sites. So when you post a status update on your Facebook or you post a status update on your Twitter, by the way, those are my Facebook and Twitter accounts there. Please feel free to check those out, like or follow if you want to. You are engaged in microblogging. These are short bursts of information that go out there. Okie dokie. In the next video, we're going to take a look at digital audio.